let's do an example of a project and our first step in our example is we're going to map out this project. Uh, by map out I mean we're going to draw a diagram. So we're going to graphically show the, act the activities and the sequencing of those, uh, those activities. Then we'll move into um, determining the total time for the project. Okay, so we'll be keeping track of each how long each individual activity takes. Uh, then we will use that to determine the total time to complete the project. Okay. We'll also look at a little bit of scheduling. So, uh, not not scheduling, maybe in the way that you would see a you know, schedule for your shifts, although it can get broken down in that. We're going to look at time a little bit more vaguely than that. So beginning, how long to, from beginning to end? So the project starts at zero, ends at whenever it ends. And so we look at time relative to the beginning of the project. But, you know, there's certain flexibility to that. Uh, however, for us, we're going to try to keep it simple rather than have a really mixed hodgepodge of dates that gets to become very, very messy. Okay, we'll talk about what's what, what we will call the critical bottleneck activities. Uh, we will see this in, in greater detail, but essentially those refer to that set of activities or that pathway from beginning to end, uh, which uh, determines how long the entire project takes. Typically, it's the longest pathway. Not typically, always the longest pathway. Uh, for activities that aren't on that critical uh, path or critical bottle are one of those critical bottleneck activities uh, how much delay can be tolerated before it's that delay in that particular activity results in a delay in the overall project uh, project okay uh, we won't talk about the question six but it is a question that's you know legitimately can be can be asked so it's there but a little bit beyond the scope of our class and then what is the probability that the project can be completed in 47 weeks okay? and then that really then that's where we start to look at probability distributions and that's where uh, in some modeling of, of these uh, projects you get into the beta distribution and, and things like that. Okay? But what we will uh, focus in on and what is important to us is uh, what is the least expensive way to complete the project uh, within 40 weeks. So uh, we can kind of see that there's a, there's a a limit we got to get it done within 47 weeks but what happened how, how could could we get it done in 40 weeks okay. and you know a little bit of budgeting okay so the setup is we have the reliable construction company and they've just made a winning bid of 5.4 million dollars to construct a new plant for a major manufacturer a contract includes the following provisions a penalty of three hundred thousand dollars if reliable has not completed construction within 47 weeks so clearly we need to get this done within 47 weeks. A bonus of $150,000 if Reliable has completed the plant within 40 weeks. Okay. So we have, we have two issues here. So first step in this process is to determine how long this project is going to take. We want to make sure that it falls it within the 47 weeks. But we would really like it if we can do it within 40 weeks so that we both get the $150,000 bonus and uh, reduce the probability that we would face this $300,000 penalty. So let us begin. Uh, so the first step in this uh, let us begin is we have the work breakdown structure for this pr particular project. So we have all our activities and we give them a letter A, B, C, D just so it's easy to, easy to map out and it's easy to see the diagram. Uh, and so functionally, it's it, it's it's very uh, it's very nice and clean that way. So we have certain activities, and and you know we excavate. So well, first of all, we got to dig a hole, right? We lay the foundation. Right? If we start thinking about building a, a building, right? We got to think of okay, we start with got to dig dig something out, right? We lay a foundation, and where we dug something out, you know, it's just at the basic level. Uh, when we put up some rough walls, we and, you know, on the, and down the sides, we put up a roof. We put in the exterior plumbing install the interior plumbing, um, you know, basically plumbing to and from the building from the outside, now the plumbing within the inside, put up the exterior siding, do the exterior painting, do electrical work, uh, put up the wallboard, you know, 
uh, install the flooring, do the interior painting, install the exterior fixtures, install the interior fixtures. So we have all those activities. And there's, you, you, you can kind of visualize how a building comes together. And there's a certain order to these activities. Certain things have to be completed before other activities can start. Okay. So let's start the, the process of mapping that out. Okay, so let's let's map out this project. And the first step in us mapping out this project is we are going to start with a start node. Right? We just need to know where the beginning is. That's it. Call it beginning, call it start, call it whatever you like. Okay. And uh, just for formality, we could put that as the start. It starts at start it's period zero. Okay, and it finishes <laughs> at period zero. Okay. So it kind of starts and finishes. Uh, at the same period, because it doesn't actually take any time. Okay. Now, I notice I've left a little um, comma there. Uh, that'll come up later. Okay. So we're going to start our, we look at our set of activities, our set of, our, our work breakdown structure, and we see activity A begins. Okay, cool. Activity A has no immediate predecessors. Uh, however, every other activity does have an immediate predecessor. So that tells us that A is the first activity. So I circle little A. And again, S is equal to A starts at period 0 and finishes, so an F, at period when? Two weeks, because it takes two weeks to do that. So we go from uh, the 0 week to the second week, and uh, that's the beginning and finishing of A. Okay? So this might, might look a little bit, we're drawing it out, I'm explaining it on the next slide, it's a nice clean uh, picture of it okay so if uh, if if you're having trouble following along easy you can bounce around to the other slide and, and see a, a neater uh, version of it i look at uh, activity b now and activity b has one immediate predecessor and that's a and it is the only activity with a as an immediate predecessor so that just tells me we just go straight to b and b cannot begin until a has finished so that the start time for B really can't be earlier than period two. And when does B finish? Well, B takes four weeks, so two plus four is six. So B finishes in period six. Okay. Look at uh, activity C. And activity C, again, has only one predecessor, um, and that's B. And uh, nobody else has B as a predecessor, so we go from B to C. C ha can, has B as a predecessor, so C can't start until B is finished. When does B finish? Well, it finishes in period six. How long does C take? C takes uh, six weeks. C, sorry, C takes 10 weeks. Six plus 10 is 16. Right, so if it starts in period six, takes ten weeks to do, it means it's not going to finish until period sixteen, right? Ten plus six. So I have C. And now I just kind of roll down to D. Now I look at D and E, and something I notice there is both D and E, and if I scroll down a little further, I all depend on activity C. Okay, so now I got kind of break. I go to, I've got activity D, which depends on C. I've got activity E for echo, depends on C. And when I look down to I, I see I have activity I, which also depends on C. And so three activities have C as its immediate predecessor. So next step, I'm just flowing now through. Now I got E and E. Uh, so all these can start. So let's see. When can D start? Well, D has to wait for C to be done. So D can't start till period 16. Uh, when can it finish? Well, D takes six weeks. Six plus 16, that's 22. Okay, it's gonna get a little bit squishy in there. E, on the other hand, again, start activity, same, right? Starts when C is finished, which is period 16. Finishes when E takes four weeks. So that means it can't finish until period 20. 
and then I way down there again I can start on uh, six, period 16 when C is finished and when can I finish well I take seven weeks so 16 plus 7 is 23 and so we see that I can finish in <clears throat> you know uh, period 23 so now I just I'm going going through the steps here now F who does F depend on F depends on E okay but there's another activity that depends on E and I look down and I see that that's H okay so I'm going to draw this out E can go to F E can also go to H Sometimes the first, this is a more complicated uh, drawing. Sometimes you, you may encounter the situation where you uh, draw it out once and it looks a little bit ugly and you draw it out again. Okay, so that, nothing I'm doing here precludes that that might be a, a certain danger. But let's look at uh, F. F can start when E is done, which is period 20. F finishes when... F finishes in five weeks, so F can start finish in period 25. H, H can start Ooh, H is a tricky one. H depends on G. We haven't even talked about G yet okay so H is up H is a tricky one so we have to hold out for H for just a second uh, and so let's go down to G because so I, I can't I need E and G to be completed before H may begin so I need to know what's going on with G here uh, G's immediate predecessor is D for Delta okay so I write D for Delta is G G goes to H Okay. And what can what do I know about G? Well, G, when can G start? Well, G needs D to be done. So G can start in period 22. Finishes about seven weeks later in period 29. So when I look and see when can H begin, so start time for H, it needs G and E to both be done. So although E is done in period 20, G is not finished until period 29. H cannot begin until period 29. Okay, And then F, uh, finishing time for H uh, takes nine weeks. Uh, so 29 plus 9, and we get 38. And we've got H there. Okay, now we go to I. Okay, so well, we've seen I already because it, it kind of needed C to be completed. So what's up with I? I got C, takes seven weeks. We've got I taken care of already. Rolling over to J. Good old J, the letter J, 10th letter in the alphabet. Requires two activities to be completed, F and I. Okay, so let's write um, maybe J out here. Requires F to be completed, requires I to be completed. Okay, so two predecessor activities. When can J begin? J can begin at the later of those two, right, which is period 25. Finishes, well, how long does J take? J takes eight weeks. J can then finish eight weeks after period 25 which is period 33. All right, on we go. K depends on uh, J. Hey, but I noticed that L depends on J as well. So let's go K and L. Okay, so K and L. And let's look at K, start times, L, L start times. Okay, so uh, K and L, K 
cannot begin until j is finished, so k can begin in period 33. Guess what? L can begin in period 33 as well. How long does k take? How long does it go? k goes for four weeks, so it can be done four weeks after week 33. So 33 plus 4 is 37. And L takes five weeks. 5 plus 33 is 38. Ooh, almost done. Almost done. Getting towards the end. M only depends on H. So you can draw a line to M. So I've got M there. Coming out of H. Looks like M doesn't need anybody else. So start time for M is whenever H is done, which is period 38. Finish time for M. How long does M take? Two weeks. So 2 plus 38. M can be done in week 40. Looks like nobody depends on M. Last activity is N. N depends on K, N depends on L. So N cannot begin until both of those are completed. And L is finished in period 38. K is finished in period 37. So N can start in period 38. And N takes six weeks. So 38 plus 6 is 44. No more activities left. So we have end or finish. M goes to the finish because it's an end activity. N, November, goes to the finish because it's a finish activity. When does the finish start? Well, it's the later of the two activities that are the end activities. So 44 and 40. So finishes at 40, starts at 44, finishes at 44, because it's like the start, there's no time to the activity itself, but 44 weeks. Okay, so there's our sketch of our diagram. And we see that the, the, this particular project is going to take 44 weeks. So we have a nice little picture here, a um, little bit less numbers in there than what I've, I've written. I've just tried to get the the starts of our starting and finishing, but there's our project network and you know roughly conforms with the project network that we had from before. Okay, but that I wrote out. Sorry. Next step: critical path. That'll be in the next set.